of this, what this uh, Turing machine is doing, uh, it's simulating. Right? The, the Turing machine M is going to simulate this machine B. Okay? That's, that's the key idea of, of the proof. <coughs> usually any proof, there's, there's usually at least one uh, key idea that the whole proof is based on. And this is it. So this machine M is going to simulate this machine. Uh, so this is a Turing machine, and this is a finite uh, automaton, right? It's a, well, it's a DFA. So there's only uh, one, each case, there's only one next state. It's a deterministic finite automaton, right? Whereas a uh, Turing machine is an infinite machine, right? You have infinite memory. So we're going to have M simulate B. All right. Okay, now during, as the simulation runs, uh, well, now, hold on. B is a finite automaton, right? So a finite automaton always stops. And when does it stop? When it's read, after it has read the last symbol of its input stream. Okay? So after, you know, B, because M is simulating B, B, so M has to behave like B. And B is a finite automaton, <coughs> so the finite automaton will stop after it has read uh, the last symbol in its, you know, B's, not M's, B's input string. Okay? So, now you get, you're having M simulate B, so when B stops, you know, M will stop, and then you look uh, to see if uh, M uh, is in an accept state. Uh, ooh, whose? <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, you know, here's again a bit of a you know, again lack of clarity of uh, Simpson. You know, I'm writing this out word for word here. Uh, now I assume the accept state here is uh, a is one of B's accept state, right? Because M is supposed to be behaving like this DFA. So uh, so when the simulation ends, if if it, if uh, B is in a, an accept state. Well, then M will accept, okay? And if uh, B ends in uh, a non-accepting state, so your, your final state is not uh, belonging to big F, you know, the set of accepting states. Remember, go back, revision of uh, DFAs. So if uh, in the simulation, if B ends up in a non-accepting state, well, then the machine M uh, will reject, okay? Now that's that's effectively it. Uh, this so-called proof. Now this proof idea, uh, yeah, the proof idea down to here, um, and really it's the essence of proof. Uh, and the the remaining square is uh, more more commentary than, than anything. Uh, but the guts of the proof is is here. Okay. So um, so Sip is saying, you know, we'll, we'll mention a few implementation details. So it's more, it's more commentary rather than additional um, elements of a proof. So uh, this is a bit of a, a bis bit of a misnomer. Okay. So and um, Sips is asking. So imagine you sp imagine you're you're uh, the computer programmer. So ha how would you write a program to 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 perform this simulation? How how would you simulate this machine? Be so imagine yourself as usual. Imagine yourself. You're the Turing machine, and you're trying to simulate this B. So how how would you do that? Well, uh, we've asked this kind of question before. Um, common sense says uh, first have a look at your input stream and see if it's uh, correctly formatted. Right? Does it make sense? Like uh, the the encoding, the representation of your B is that is that correct? If not, reject. Uh, the encoding of your string W is that correct? Is it properly you know, legally formatted, uh, if not reject. Okay, so uh, so first thing is you know, examine your input stream. Is it is it you know, does it uh, is it correct? Uh, if not, then you know, reject the thing. Okay. Now, uh, okay, so assume that that uh, that goes through. You know, that that is a correct representation of your machine B and the string W. So let's assume that it was correct. If not, uh, reject. But if it is okay, well then we proceed further, right? Now, uh, so 
if the representation, you know, these angular brackets, if the representation of your DFA B, so if that were correct, then uh, how, like, how, how would you represent your machine uh, in, in this format? How would you represent B? Well, it's a DFA, right? Um, uh, deterministic finite automaton. And a uh, formal definition of a DFA is a five topple, you know, the usual five, remember? You know, go back to chapter, what was it? Chapter one, right? So, you know, your usual five things. So the set of states, uh, the input string alphabet, transition functions, you know, the transition rules from state to state, uh, the starting state, Q0, and F is the set of accept states. If, you, if your final state is a member of F, um, then your DFA accepts the, the string. All right. Uh, okay, so uh, your two machine M, it receives its input, uh, you know, this, uh, checks, you know, checks whether this input string here uh, properly represents the machine, you know, uh, DFA B and the string W. Okay, if not, reject, I've you know, said that before. Okay, then you, then you do the simulation itself. So you extract um, the information about B. So in other words, you, you know what these things are now. Okay. Um, we're glossing over details, of course. You know, how, how do you represent this stuff? But that's too, too low level, right? Typically in uh, algorithm, an algorithm description, you give high level, uh, high level description. Okay, so we assume that these, this five tuple uh, is contained in the encoded or uh, represented representation of B in, in this string here, the input string. Okay, so we now, now assume we now know all this stuff. Well, that, so then we can uh, simulate the behavior of B because we have this information. I mean, that is B, right? That's the formal description of B. So we, we know all this, so we now run we run B on uh, on this input string W. Okay, you 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 now have M execute the simulation, and uh, the simulation. What will it be doing? Well, it, it will keep a record because it's a, it's a Turing machine, right? It's uh, M, and it has an infinite tape, so you can store information you know, data on the tape. For example, uh, B, you know, the DFA, you're simulating B. You can store its uh, state on the tape. Uh, you can also store the position of the header. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, sorry. I forget what I just said. You can store the the position of the current. You can store the current symbol being read by the DFA, right? Because the the symbols in the input string they get read one at a time. Okay, so you can store where you are in the reading of that sequence of symbols in the input string, that, that position of where, where you are in reading the string, that can be stored. Okay? You know, B's current, current position in the input string, W. Okay? And you can put all that information, you can write that information on, onto uh, the tape of N, the tape of the tuning machine that's doing this simulation. Okay? Now, initially, you can probably see this first line next uh, next session, but uh, you know, so initially, the initial state of B is Q naught. Right? That's that's given here, the initial state. That's one of the five things in your five tuple. Okay, so you know the initial state is Q naught, and uh, the at the beginning, B's the the position of the input. Where, where the first uh, symbol, the first symbol of the input string. Uh, so when things start, when the simulation starts, the, the position of the, where the reading is taking place, like the, the next character be, to be read, in fact, will be the leftmost character of the input string. You have to start the first symbol of your string. So. Uh, all the rest, uh, well, I'll just do next session.